Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And so last video we looked at the K1 aristocrat cipher. So this time I figured we look at the K2 cipher and in the next video I'll most likely do the K3 cipher. And so the key difference that you want to know here um, between the K1, K2, and K3 is just uh, the replacement of the frequency and cipher letters as well as the placement of the keyword. And I just figure I, I'd keep uploading videos even though the season has ended um, just so that you guys could use it in the future um, or in the upcoming seasons. And so with that, if we get started on the K2 cipher, um, just a side note, all of these ciphers, whether they're K1, K2, or K3, they can all be still solved using, you know, this frequency analysis and the frequency table. But knowing what the difference between the K1, K2, and K3 cipher makes it a lot easier for you to solve it, as well as decreases the amount of time. Um, and as we all know, there's always going to be a struggle of time on the code busters tests. And so if I just give you a quick example, let's say um, our cipher text goes A, B, C, D, E. And I know that A um, represents D in the plain text. In a K1 cipher, what you would do is you'd go to A and you'd write D underneath. However, what you're going to do in a K2 cipher is instead you're going to go to D and you're going to write A underneath, which is kind of like a flip um, in the cipher and the plain text. And so to better understand this, I'll just do this problem really quick. What it tells you is that it's a K2 cipher and the keyword is, well, keyword. And the first thing that I think you guys should notice by now is that V has to be I or A. But then we see V is followed by an apostrophe and another letter, which tells me that V is most likely just going to be I. And then this apostrophe is going to be an M, which makes sense because that's one of the most common things that comes after I apostrophe. And so now what you would do in a K1 letter is you go to V and you're going to write I. But that's not how it works um, for K2. In K2, you're going to go to the I, and you're going to write V over there. Then, similarly, you're going to go to M, and you're going to write E over there. And since they give you the keyword, it becomes a lot easier to solve this overall. Um, but just do know that you can keep solving this, uh, so on and so forth, um, just as a normal cipher. And what's going to happen is you're going to get all of your alphabet from A through Z with a keyword somewhere in the middle. And as you guys should know by now, this alphabet could be shifted a couple spaces. And so you'll get an idea of what I'm saying when I fill in the keyword here, because we know it's keyword. And so I, this is the E from that E over there. And so just going to go K-E-Y-W-O-R-D. And then you're just going to continue with the rest of the alphabet. So you're just going to go A, B, C. Well, we already use D. F, G, H, I, J, L, M, N, P, Q, S, T, U. And, oh, well, we have X and Z. And so now you have the entire alphabet filled in. And now all you have to do is substitute the letters. And so this could be a little bit difficult because it's kind of hard to understand that they're flipped. But what you're going to do is, let's say, for example, we're looking at, you know, we have the next letter is the B. You're going to find B in the replacement text, and you're going to substitute it for T. If I keep filling this in, I want you to go, I tried um, to make... I'm not going to fill the rest in, but you do get an idea of how the code or how the cipher is going to end out. And so in a situation when you don't have a keyword, you really just want to remember that this, these letters are always going to be in alphabetical order, except for where the keyword is placed, which is right here. And so what I often do is, you know, I see, um, let's see, I see these three letters and let's say I got the M or let's say, sorry, um, let's say I got the N, right? 
I know that the letters that come before this are L and M. And so it's really easy for me to th fill those out. And that's just something you just have to work on with practice overall. And so the best way to practice it is obviously by trying ciphers on your own. Um, this one is a patristocrat cipher, which does make it a lot harder to solve. But if you do watch my earlier video on patristocrats, um, it'll be easier for you to uh, get the cipher and then implement the new knowledge of K2. So feel free, like usual, to pause the video here and try out the patristocrat cipher on your own. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video there, and what you should have gotten, um, I'll fill in the replacement text really quick. You should have gotten a keyword of pattern, but obviously since these T's can't repeat, it just be pattern with um, one T. And so you, or sorry, O Q S U V W X Y Z. And then it goes, pattern is in there. Then B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. And so that's the replacement text that you should have gotten. And if we fill this in, um, you should get people um, who... experience experience oh, I missed an E at the end um, people who experience success will Experiment with new ideas to push them Selves further two words a better advantage. All right, so that should be um, the plain text um, or the decoded cipher that you do get. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions. I know um, that K2 ciphers overall are a really confusing concept to grasp, grasp your mind around. Um, but other than that, uh, please do like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you guys in the next video where I'll talk about K3 ciphers.